you're a phone photographer or a phone astrophotographer, sometimes you are limited with your phone photography and you want to look a little bit further into space when you want to take some photos and this here is going to help us do it. It's, uh, it's the ultimate tool for the lazy astrophotographer. This is the Vespera 2. It is a smart telescope and it actually creates more questions than I have answers for. It captures stunning deep sky images, but it also, it also raises some pretty interesting questions. And not the question that is the most obvious, why does it look like a cartoon character from Wall-E? Here's the thing, with uh, mobile phone photography, astrophotography, it's fantastic. It's so simple to do, it's so easy to use, and it's accessible to almost everybody out there. But we hit a wall. We hit a wall with basically with physics. We don't know how far we can push these things. There is a limit as to how far we can go. There is a gap between phone photography and deep space photography with great big camera rigs. And I think that's where this sits in the marketplace. Yeah, g'day, I'm Glenn Martin and I've been doing astrophotography for a good 10 years now, I guess. Started out with just normal gear. Standard camera, Canon 6D, normal lens, normal tripod, no tracking, no stacking, none of that stuff. And just doing your little 20 second exposures. Uh, these days I'm on a fully tracked and guided system. I've got a ZWO AM5 harmonic mount. William Optics Fluorostar 91. It's about a 430 mil uh, focal length. And, uh, and I get stuff like this with it. Uh, I use a mono camera, so I'm also using uh, narrowband filters. And my Dragons of Ara here, this is 16 hours worth. And astrophotography, I often describe it, it's that burning dumpster fire that you think you can put out by throwing money into it. And gear really does bring benefits in Astro. I mean, you don't have to spend a lot. And my setup, we're, we're talking around 10,000 Australian kangaroo skins. But for me, astrophotography, it's, it's about the aesthetic. It's about being creative. So when it comes to smart telescopes, now they're not, they're not new, but they're not old, old either. They haven't been around that long. I'm really excited for them because I've just described how much effort this takes and the learning curve to get to this stage has, it was a very, very long time. The idea of smart telescopes, just being able to plonk it down, press a button, it auto aligns and finds your target and just shoots for four hours. I think it's a great thing for this hobby in general because it's going to get more people into it. When you see the sort of stuff that I'm running, that can be a bit intimidating for people. They, they either can't afford it or they don't understand it or don't want to take the time to learn it. So I think smart telescopes are going to be really beneficial because the more people that are doing Astro, hopefully the price of this gear comes down and the innovation happens faster as well. I've taken images of the Orion Nebula as an example with my smartphone and you can do it, but I've done it with this and this is what it looks like. So if you want to be able to do deep space photography, a bit of kit like this is going to give you that bridge between your phone and what the big fellas do with their big camera rigs. It has, it has raised a few questions. One, well, let's, let's talk about this unit itself first before I raise some questions with you. The build quality on this is amazing. I'm so impressed with how this was packaged, with how it feels, the build quality of all of the things that they've sent to me with this. It really is quite an impressive bit of kit. It uses the Sony IMX585 sensor. It's 8.3 megapixels, or uh, you can use it uh, 24 megapixels in a mosaic. And what I mean by that is you can set it so through the night sky, you can take a photo here, 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 and here, and it'll blend them all together and give you kind of like a panorama photo. From phone photography to this style of photography, it is a giant leap, but it is also the most attainable knowledge because for, for a phone photographer because you control it through a phone. You're like, you don't look through this anywhere. There is no eyepiece on this. It, there is, a, a, the only way I could describe it, there is a disconnect when you're using this. You, you, there is no eyepiece to look at and to see the moon, to see the craters on the moon. You are literally looking at an app. So I've been using this for, a couple of months, I would say. And I will set this outside 
with another bit of kit, which I'll get to in a second, and set up what the scope is going to do all night on an app, and then go to bed. And then wake up in the morning, connect to the device, and pull the images from the device onto my iPad. And it does work that way. It, it works perfectly fine. But the disconnect is absolutely real. This, mate, this could just be a chunk of plastic and metal sitting over in the corner that, that, well, it could be just full of images. You wouldn't know because there's nothing to look through. And that was a little bit of a, a struggle for me to get my head around. Using this is dead set easy. I'm, I'm not going to do a tutorial on this because it is just so easy. You, you put the base of, of the uh, tripod onto the base of the scope. You put the legs onto the tripod base there. There's a little uh, level here that you mount up onto the base as well between the base and the unit itself. And the legs are a little bit adjustable, very small amount adjustable. And, and, and that's it. You, um, you push and hold this button here and the, the light will flash. And once it goes solid, it turns on. You connect via Bluetooth with your phone or with your iPad and you use a Singularity app. And from there, it is as simple as going through that app and finding different planetary objects, nebula, galaxies, those sorts of things, and set it up to observe those, those items, well, those objects in the sky. And, and that's it. It just starts appearing on your, on your device. And I kind of think to myself, <laughs> is it real or is it just images that are stored in a unit like this? And this is not something specific to this device. It is something I think in this sort of genre of photography where you don't look through a scope, you don't look onto a screen on your phone, you don't look through an eyepiece on your camera, you are just looking at an app. And for all we know, this has just got a hard drive in here full of, full of images. <laughs> you just don't know. That's the disconnect that I'm talking about. This is fairly typical of what I'm talking about with the disconnect. I am sitting here at three o'clock in the morning, capturing a nebula. I've just set it to do it and it's just doing it. There's really nothing for me to think about. I'm up to 29 frames now of this nebula stacking. <clears throat> and you can watch it build. You don't need to. You can just FTP to the, to the um, telescope later when you wake up in the morning, bring the images down and stack them yourself or get the stacked image yourself. It's, um, there really is. A, it's, it's the perfect tool uh, for the lazy astrophotographer. But I've had an absolute ball with this thing. The images that I've taken with this has been amazing. And it's things where uh, through winter, when it's so damn cold, you can go and set this up um, and, and it will take photos for as long as the battery lasts, which brings us to the first problem with this. The battery on the Vespera 2 lasts for four hours. Now, if you've done any sort of intro into deep space photography, you know that you can shoot 10, 15 hours worth of imagery to get one photo. So four hours is a bit of a downside of this. What I've ended up doing is using a small Jackery external uh, uh, power unit and just plugging in the USB under here and letting it go all night. That way I've had it going all night long. And you can use the app to say from this time of night to this time of night, I want to image this nebula. And from this time of night to this time of night, I want to image this planet. And from this time at night to this time in the morning, I want to image this other nebula because it's all moving through the night sky. So it is good for that. It's perfect for the absolute lazy astrophotographer. It, it really is. It really, really is dead set simple to use. If I can pull this out of the box and put it on the ground and start shooting deep space images, you can too. It is as simple as putting the base on there, putting the tripod on there, opening the app, say, I want to target this and go and shoot it. It's that simple. Um, with those images, you can then go and stack them if you like. Uh, it can stack it all by itself. You can throw them into Lightroom and adjust them however you see fit. And when you think about what I was saying before about uh, all the images may well be stored in here, the main thing that differs between astrophotography, like deep space astrophotography, I think, is time and the edit. And, and they're the two things. So you can, so my, the conspiracy theory in my head says there's a heap of images in here. And the way that we all differentiate from each other is the way we edit them. I'm sure it's not that. It's just that that, that that really demonstrates the disconnect that I see personally between taking images with a camera, taking images through a telescope and using a smart scope. The disconnect is real. The 
the battery life is certainly a downside. The other downside, and it's pretty much the only other downside besides the, the disconnect feeling, is the stacking. Now, it stacks Nebula uh, very, very well. It stacks the galaxies incredibly well. I've got some sensational images out of this thing. What it doesn't do, and the thing that I was most disappointed with this is, it doesn't stack the moon. Like these images right here are from moon photos. And when I look at that compared to, say, a photo that I've taken with the S25 Ultra, I would argue that the phone is better than what this is. And it just shouldn't be that way. And my mentality around this is that they can probably do software updates to this to enable that stacking. Because it just wasn't there. It wasn't like there's no manual sort of uh, calibration focusing that you can do with this. Like you're getting better images out of something that's not this sort of caliber. That's less a caliber than what this, this should be. So I think if they introduce moon stacking and planetary stacking, you're going to get much more enjoyment out of this. Inside the app, once you start observing things and it starts stacking things all by itself, you're going to see where this thing really comes into its own. You can take some images, like a couple of minutes photo of Orion Nebula, and it's, it's going to look instantly better than what your phone photos are going to look. But then when you give it longer in that photo or the imaging of that one nebula, it gives you more color, it gives you more definition, and the longer you shoot for, the better that image is. And once it's been shooting for some time, if you're new to this deep space thing, it, it really opens up your eyes as to what is possible. And to be able to do that with the size and weight of what this is, um, it is something that's actually kind of special. It's, it's like having like 10 grand worth of astrophotography rig that sits literally in a backpack that it comes in. It's not just um, deep sky or deep space photography. It's not just moon and planetary photography. You, you, you get filters with this. You get a light pollution filter. Well, these are options that you can get with this, a light pollution filter. I don't really have the need for that here because the skies are just so dark. They do also have available um, solar filters. So you can put a filter onto the lens in this and shoot the sun and shoot the sun over a period, and you'll end up getting some pretty good photos, imagery of the sun. The, um, the setup of it is a little bit more manual than what the nighttime stuff is. At nighttime, you literally turn it on, it does its calibrations, and it's ready to go. At, at, during the daytime, you've got to move it around a little bit, line up shadows and stuff with the, with the gaps that appear through, through this, um, so it knows roughly what's going on. And some of the images that I've had with the sun as well has been uh, pretty darn good. And look, on the uh, Bloody Legends Facebook group, these things are becoming quite popular. There's been quite a few guys who are shooting deep space imagery with smart telescopes. It's definitely something to put the toe in the water to see if you enjoy this. Because as I said in the beginning, you can set this up, go to bed, get up in the morning and get some pretty remarkable images. All right, let's talk about who this is actually for because it's not for everybody. There is a, a specific niche in the market for something like this. It's for people like you and I who are doing mobile phone photography and you want to go that little bit more, but you don't want to go buying all this different camera gear. You can get something like this and do some pretty spectacular things with it. I think it's also a good place for people who just want good results from something without the stress of learning the ins and outs of deep space imagery. All the smarts are in here, you don't need them in here, which you can look at as a good point or a bad point, that's up to you. It's also, for, I think, for people like, uh, it's also for um, campers, travelers, places, things, people like that, who are moving around a fair bit and you're into astrophotography, this thing packs up very small, you can take it with you easy as and get some good images out of something that's very small. Another group of people that this might well be for are parents. Um, you get this thing out in the backyard, if you've got some small kids, give them the app and they can go and do this thing relatively easy just from the app. And for a kid to be able to deep space photograph, that's, that's kind of cool. Who this is not for is significant. This is not for someone who enjoys the manual dexterity of deep space imagery or telescope observation. This is not for someone like that. This is because of that disconnect that is there. For me, this has been an absolute ball 
to use. It has been so much fun to be able to capture the stuff that we've been able to capture with this little device just in my backyard. Disconnect is absolutely real, but if you can get around that disconnect, you're going to have a ball with this bit of kit. It really is a lot of fun. So look, if you're into mobile photography or smart gear like this, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We're that close to hitting 100,000 on this channel now. I'd love for you to be a part of it. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on the Vespera 2. I'll see you guys next week. Catch you later.